Okay, let's check out the symbols that we will be using in diagrams. The most common one will be the tank reactor, as you can see here. Well, actually, this will be a batch reactor. If you have inlet and outlet, you can convert it to a CSTR reactor. This is the agitated tank, so it's very important to denote that this is only agitation. Uh, so you gotta ensure that you're using reactors. So for reactors, sometimes you have an X, which implies there is reaction or conversion. Jacketed tanks, for instance, if you require to state that there will be heating or cooling. And tubular reactor is a reactor which has tubes. Of course, you know that in real life they are just pipes, but maybe you just want to ensure that this is a tubular reactor. Okay, so this is the vessel reactor with a heater. This is the heater, so it goes in, gets heated, goes out. Most likely an endothermic reaction. What else do we have here? This is a reactor with agitation and jacket. I was telling you before. The packed bed vessel, this implies that there is a reaction with a package inside it. That's cool. And here, guys, remember hydrocracking is technically a reactor. It will crack all the hydrocarbon molecules. Hydrosulfurization is not technically speaking a reactor. Okay, cracking, coking. Well, actually, these are reactions, but I will not say those are 100% the reactors we saw. Tubular reactor, of course, this is the PFR, plug flow reactor. Fluidized reactor can be also used as package bed reactor. Mixing reactor can be the continuous tier tank reactor. And all these others are very, let's say, typical of a petrochemical plant, not likely to be seen in the normal unit operations.